In this presentation, we will study about the functions and methods which works on dictionary in Python. Let's start with the len function first. This method returns length of the dictionary, that is, it counts the key value pair within the dictionary. Let me create a dictionary first. Say d equal to within curly braces open and close. Let me write down one colon, one inward, then comma, two colon, two inward, then three colon, three inward. So this dictionary contains three pair. So this is the first pair, this is the second pair, and this is the third pair. So it contains three pairs. Now, if I want to see the length of the dictionary or the number of pairs within this dictionary, for that we will use len function, len within bracket d. Now press enter, it will return three. That is, there are three pairs within the dictionary. Next, clear. It removes all the item from the dictionary. That means it deletes the content of the dictionary. So here already a dictionary is declared. Now, if I print D, so it will give me the dictionary. Now, if I write D dot clear, bracket open, bracket close, enter. Now again print D, so now there is no content within the dictionary. That's mean the clear function deletes all the data or the pairs from the dictionary. If you want the dictionary to be blank, so just write on D dot clear. Next the get method of dictionary. This get method is used to access the dictionary value with the help of keys. This is similar to dictionary within third bracket, the key. If the key is not present, Python by default gives error. But in case of get method, we can specify our own message through default argument. So let me show you an example for that. First of all, let me create a dictionary, say A for Apple, B for ball c for cat and say d for dog now give enter now if i write d within third bracket say i am writing b so it will return the corresponding value of the key b that is ball so here b is the key and ball is the value so when we are writing d within third bracket the key name that is b it will return its corresponding value that is ball now the same thing can be done by using the get function look if i write d dot get within bracket say i'm writing b bracket close enter so it is returning the same thing that is the ball now if i write d within bracket say uh, e this key that is e is not present within the dictionary so it will generate an error and this error is generated by the interpreter now suppose if the key is not present within the dictionary and we want to show our own customized message so for that there is a provision in case of get method look d dot get i'm writing e then uh, a message key is not in the dictionary bracket close then enter since e is not within the dictionary so it is returning this message which is written by user or by us that's mean when a key argument is not present within the dictionary in case of this syntax it will generate an error but in case of get method we can customize our own error message next the item function it returns all the key value pair as a sequence of tuples that's mean it will extract each and every pair from the dictionary and convert those pair into a tuple and display you individually. Let me show you an example. Suppose this is a dictionary where A, B, C, D are the keys and apple, ball, cat and dog are the values. Now, if I write D dot items, bracket open, bracket close. Look what happened. It will return all the pair as a individual tuple element and look if you have a concept of for loop i can show you this can be displayed in different lines so for i in d dot items colon now if i print i look what happened so it will display all the tuple in different line 
So again, I'm repeating that item function converts each pair of the dictionary into a tuple element. Next, keys. It returns all the keys in the dictionary as a sequence of list. That means it will extract all the keys from the dictionary and convert those into a list. So here is my dictionary. Now, if I write d dot keys, look what happened. So it will return a list which contains all the keys of the dictionary that is A, B, C and D. So if you need the keys separately, for that you have to use the keys function. Similarly, there is an another method called the values which return all the values in the dictionary as a sequence of list. Look. I have already declared a dictionary. Now, if I write d dot values, look what happened. It will extract all the values that is apple, ball, cat, and dog and convert it into a list. Next, the update method. It merges key value pair from the new dictionary to the original one. To use this method, we need two dictionary. The second one will update the first one look how it happens let me take a dictionary which contains the details of an employee suppose i'm writing e1 equal to name asian salary 25000 age 24 let me declare another dictionary e2 which contains name as anil salary 30000 department sales so e1 is the original dictionary and e2 is the new dictionary and here the items in the new dictionary are added to the old one and override any item already there with the same keys. Suppose I am writing e1.update and this e1 will be updated with the values of e2 bracket close then enter. Now look what happened with the e1 dictionary. So print e1. Initially the name of e1 was Ishan. Now it has been updated by the name Anil. So the key name matches in both the dictionary. That's why the second one updated the original one. Same case for the salary also. The salary has been updated to 30,000. Now look, there is no age key within the E2. That's why the pair age colon 24 remains same within the original dictionary. Now look at the new or the second dictionary E2. Here a new key has been added that is department and its value is sales. Since there is no such department key within the original dictionary that is within E1, that's why this department sales has been added as a new within the first dictionary. So it is the new pair which has been added within the first dictionary. Again I am repeating, so when there is a common key in between the old and the new dictionary, the values of the original dictionary are getting updated by the second one and if there are new key value pair within the second dictionary so those pair will be added as a new within the original dictionary this method can be also be implemented without using this update statement for that we require a for loop i will show you that technique in the for loop section now let me proceed with the next method copy it returns a shallow copy of the dictionary, it does not modify the original dictionary. Let me take this dictionary E1 equal to name Asian salary 25,000 and age 24. Now let me check the ID of E1. So ID within bracket E1. So it will return the ID of this dictionary. Look this carefully. Now if I write E2 equal to E1. Now if I print E2 it will display the same dictionary and if I print the ID of E2 look what happens both E1 and E2 has the same ID because this E1 and E2 are pointing to the same dictionary name Asian salary 25,000 age 24 so no new dictionary is created for the second dictionary that is E2 now if we want to create a separate dictionary and that will be not related to the previous one or the original one for that we require the copy method look if i write e2 equal to e1 dot copy now if i print e2 it will return the same dictionary but if i print the id of e2 now look what happened it will show me a different id look the id of e1 is 571509112 
and the ID of E2 is 59960968. That means these two dictionaries are different. They are located in two different memory spaces. One is pointing by E1 and another is pointing by E2 now. If you change the value of E2, suppose I am changing the name of the E2 dictionary. So I am writing E2 name equal to, say I am writing Akash. Enter. Now if I print E2, the name has been changed. Now if I print E1, it remains same. The name is Asian, salary 25,000, age 24. Next, form keys. It creates a new dictionary from the given sequence of element with a value provided by the user. Syntax is the dictionary name dot form keys within bracket. It accepts two argument. And the second one is the optional. That is a sequence comma values. Values is optional. Sequence of element which is to be used as keys for the new dictionary. Values which is set to each element of the dictionary. Let me show you an example of the form keys. First of all, let me create a sequence of keys. Say keys equal to within curly braces. Let me write down A, E, I, O and U. All the vowels of the English alphabets. Now I am writing vowels equal to DICT. This is the dict constructor which I have already discussed in my previous videos. If you have no ideas regarding this, so just go and visit my previous video. The link is given in the description box. And then come over here. So the dict constructor dot from keys within bracket keys. Here I have not used any values. Then enter. Now if I print vowels, look. A dictionary has been created from the given sequence A, E, I, O, U and its value are not mentioned over here. So the, all the values are none over here. Now if I write say value equal to is a vowel and since it is a string so I have enclosed it within a single quote. Now look what happened. If I write let me copy it down from the above then paste over here. Now let me put this value argument over here. Look, the sequence of keys are A, E, I, O, U. Value is, is a vowel and we are creating a vowels dictionary with the help of from keys and it is accepting two argument keys and value. Now press enter. Let me print the vowels dictionary. Look what happens. This text is a vowel becomes the value for each and every element of this sequence. So for all these keys, there is a common value that is is a vowel. We cannot assign different values for different keys by using this technique. So the values may be a string, a list, etc. Next, pop item. It removes and return the last item. Let me take this dictionary A for apple, B for ball, C for cat and D for dog. Now, if I write D dot pop item, look what happened. It will return the last pair of the dictionary and it's delete this pair from the dictionary. Now, if I print D, D dog is no more within the dictionary. It has been deleted. Next, set default. It returns the value of a key if the key is in dictionary. If not, it insert key with a value to the dictionary. So here is the syntax. Dictionary name, then set default, key, then the default value. The default value is again, it is an optional argument. Here the key is the key that we are going to search for. And the default value is going to be inserted within the dictionary if the key is not in the dictionary. If not provided, the default value will be none. Look, what does the set defaults returns? Values of the key if it is in the dictionary. None if the key is not in the dictionary and default value is not specified. Next, it returns default value if the key is not in the dictionary and default value is specified. Let me show you an example. First of all, let me create a dictionary say person and person equal to say uh, name Asian salary 25,000 age 24. Let me take two pair 
so let me delete the salary now if i write say age equal to person dot say default within bracket single quote age now if i print person it will show me the declared dictionary and if i print age so it will return the age so this is how a set default works when the key is in the dictionary now let us take the same example but this time we will consider the first element of the dictionary only so let me copy it down control v paste bracket close so now here person equal to name ishan nothing else within this dictionary now this time i'm writing salary equal to person dot set default within bracket salary enter now if i print person this time so it will add a new key salary within the dictionary but its value is none because this salary has not been defined within the person dictionary obviously if i print salary it will display nothing let me write down like this print salary so it will return none so the present state of the person is look like this name ishan salary none now again i am assigning age equal to say person dot set default within bracket age and this time i am writing a value for the age suppose i am writing 24 look what happened if i print person so now it will add this age with the value 24 in the dictionary and if i print age so obviously it will return 24 so these are the most required and commonly used functions and methods of dictionary data type in python there are more methods which can be applied on dictionary that is the type method returns class type of the argument object passed as parameter type function is mostly used for the debugging purpose let me consider this dictionary if i write type within bracket d and it will return the class type dictionary dict we can also write type within bracket say a blank dictionary so it will written class type dict this type function can be applied on any data type of dictionary and it will return the corresponding class type next the str function it produces a printable string representation of a dictionary so it will convert the whole dictionary to a string let me show you an example if i write str of d so it will return the above dictionary s colon sky v colon violet in a complete string the whole dictionary will be enclosed within double quotes and it will be treated as a simple string not a dictionary so this is all for this video thank you